The 3D pop-out illusion is a mind-boggling effect that when done right, will bring your videos to a whole new level and actually boggle your viewers' minds. So in this video, I'm gonna go step-by-step step through the process of making this mind-boggling effect in DaVinci Resolve so that you can blow people's minds too. All that stuff coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna keep leveling up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into this. So now that we're in DaVinci Resolve, we're going to make this effect. There's three things that you need first. So the first thing you're gonna need, of course, is a video clip. And this video clip has to have objects moving from the outside into the frame or the opposite way from inside all the way out. So the second thing you're gonna need are black bars or they're called letterboxes. I went online, found some letterbox overlays. And when I say some, I mean like 12 gigabytes worth of freaking overlays. I have no clue what I'm gonna do with them all. So I'll put a download link in the description for that. Finally, the third thing you're gonna need is patience because there can be some tedious parts of this. So now that that's out of the way, let's just make this effect. So you can see on my timeline here, I have my two video clips. So before I jump into the color tab, you want to click and hold your bottom layer where your video is and hold alt to make a duplicate copy and bring it on the third video layer. So your black bars will be sandwiched in between these two video layers. And now just jump into the color tab. So first off, you need to make sure that you have the right clip selected. We want our third layer selected, that top layer. So for this, go to your timeline right here. You'll see that this little mini timeline pops up. Make sure that you have this third video layer selected there. So now just move forward on your clip until you get the full object in frame like this. Next, click on your serial node and hit Alt-S. This is gonna create another serial node which will host our mask. Then in the window tab right here, go down to the pen tool and now starts the tedious process of masking out the tip of this image. Now remember, you don't have to mask this whole image out because it's not going over both sides of the letterbox. It's only going over the top letterbox. So I only need to mask probably until like right here on the image. So now just zoom in to the area using the scroll wheel and begin your mask. If you screw up and you put a point somewhere where you didn't want to, you can actually just hover over that point and hit the middle mouse button and it'll be deleted. So now just start making this mask and get your ice pack out because your wrist is gonna hurt. So once you finish your mask, you're gonna see that really nothing changes. And that's because we need to add the alpha output now. So right click on this grid right here and go to add alpha output. So now just connect your serial nodes output to this alpha output right here. And now you can see that this object right here is overlaying on top of the black bars. So I mean, that's pretty cool. But now we need to make sure that the mask actually stays in place because this is a video, it moves, things move. So now just go to the tracker tab right here. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna track forward like this. So you can see that there was a little screw up right there at the end. Now it doesn't really matter because we got the object in frame before the mask freaks out. So if it really bothers you, you can just go to the frame right here and just readjust it. Ultimately frame just allows you to manually move around the mask and it adds keyframes. If you were on clip like we were before, it's not gonna actually do that and it's gonna screw your whole mask up. So make sure if you manually move anything, you're on frame. So if you move something around, go back to clip and then move back to your original keyframe. And you can see it right here. This is the first keyframe. It's where we started our track and we moved it forward. Now we're gonna track backwards. So now to track backwards, hit the track reverse button right here and it's gonna screw up because it just does but resolved in most of the heavy lifting for us. Now, unfortunately, we have to start manually tweaking the mask. So we're gonna go to frame once again, and we wanna move to a place in our clip where our mask is aligned well. So I'd say somewhere like around here. This, this looks pretty good. Now move forward using your arrow keys and just adjust this mask and even some of the points if you need to. Like, so there's things not sticking out, like you don't wanna see the sky at all. I know this can be a little tedious, especially having to go frame by frame, moving all these points around, but you just really wanna make sure that you have a good mask. So just adjust the points around and make sure that you can't see the sky at all. Now continue to move forward and you can see that there's actually a lot of stuff that's starting to get cut off here. You can, like if you move the mask around, you see that the mask itself is a lot smaller than the actual object is. And that's because it's getting closer to the camera. So instead of having to move all of these points around again, because that's a freaking pain in the butt, you can actually just go back to the window tab right here and go to softness and on the outside section, you can just bring it up a little. You don't wanna bring it up a ton, but you just want it to add some more of this outside part into the image. 
So of course, this is all dependent on your image. It might or might not work depending on what you're masking out. Then just keep moving forward and adjusting the mask around. Continue to do this until the object is all the way out of the frame. And if you need, you can bring the softness up even more to reveal more of the image. And eventually you'll get to the place where the object itself is out of the frame. So then you just drag your mask off and make sure that it stays off because for some reason it likes to just jump back on like this. I don't know why, but it does. So now we can just go right here and turn off our mask. We can still edit the parameters, but we just wanna see how it looks. And now we can just go frame by frame through this and just see how our mask actually held up. Now odds are your mask isn't perfect and that's totally fine. Mine's not perfect. So now we can just play around with the softness because softness is your friend. And it's gonna help it blend in more with this overall image because you can see the motion blur right there. This is super sharp. You don't want it to be super sharp. So you can see that we have sky peeking through and we really don't want that. So go to the inside and just bring it up and you'll see that it actually starts to disappear. And then you can move over to the outside and just play with it like that, add some softness back in. And it really just blurs the whole thing together really nice. So now let's go frame by frame through it and just tweak it add some softness, reduce the softness, do whatever you have to do. Just make sure that the mask is super tight to this object. So now once you've softened your mask up and it looks good, let's say you just uh, you just hate your life and you want to just add more of these 3D pop-out effects in there. Well, boy, do I have something for you. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to that section, once again, where you have your full image out there. You can even just remove this alpha output so you can see the full image if it helps. And under your first node, you're gonna hit Alt-S and disconnect this line right here. And from the first node to the second one, have it branching off a lot like this. So now there's like a Y with these lines and then right click, go to add node and go to key mixer. So now take your alpha layer from your second node and your third one and combine them together in this key mixer and then connect the key mixer output to the alpha output. And you'll see that now you can just add on a new mask. And if you want to add more, you just continue to use key mixers. You can just add another key mixer, add another serial node from up here, disconnect this because who even cares? Connect your new mask key to the key mixer and take the output of this one and just combine it with that and bring this new, new key mixer to the alpha output. And that's how you just keep stacking masks on top of one another. So there you have it, the 3D pop out illusion effect. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with a friend so that they can do this incredible mind boggling effect too. If you like me, hit the subscribe button. And if you really like me, hit that bell notification. It helps out so much. Also, a pretty cool thing happened the other day. I launched a Patreon where I'll actually be posting blooper videos, releasing whole videos like days early to you guys and even doing some giveaways in the future. So if you guys are interested in that, check that out in the link in the description. The whole purpose of me creating a Patreon is so I can ultimately like bring you guys better and more frequent content. Also, I have a question for you guys. What are some relatively basic things or beginner things that you would like to know in DaVinci Resolve? Because I'm aware that not everybody is like expert level DaVinci Resolve. So what are some things that you want to improve on that you want to learn all together? I really wanna know these things because I wanna help you get better as an editor. So please leave a comment down below. I read and respond to every single one of them. But as usual, the video on the top is a video all about the fast forward effect in DaVinci Resolve. And the video on the bottom is a video that YouTube thinks that you will like. But until the next one, peace.